Hi, Alejandra. Welcome to the Simplifying Entrepreneurship Podcast. Hi, Peter. Great to see you again. Yes, absolutely. And as we're recording this, I know we did one together on your podcast, The Biz of Wealth, and that one is going live here too. And I, I'm excited to have a follow-up conversation and, and uh, introduce you to my audience as well. Yeah, he actually went live today. Awesome. Cool. Yes. Very cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's interesting to see uh, things go in in process and how they come out and how it, other people do things too but that that's great and i'm excited today to talk to you uh, around scaling i mean scaling is such a important piece of growth for your business and you know we talk to uh, and and you know our audience consists of entrepreneurs who are always looking to grow their business too so i think this will be a cool conversation around uh, scaling today. And, you know, one of the things that we were chatting just before we hopped on was this idea how you've kind of flipped around some of the ways that you were working with people and, and looking at things around the top of the funnel marketing to the whole customer as far as that journey goes. And why don't we get into that? Because that sort of gets us into why you want to start with that before you look at the things that you need to scale up to. Exactly. So my background, I, I used to be a journalist and then I delved into marketing. And whenever you think of marketing, most organizations think of lead generation, yeah. right? So marketing is associated with anything that happens in terms of social media, advertising, generating new leads, etc. Yeah. And Throughout my history as a marketer, what I found was that the organizations that had the best client experience were actually the ones that had the most growth. So how do you do client experience when, and I'm, I'm, I'm specialized in service-based companies, how do you do, how do you make client experience scalable? And how do you make sure that um, your marketing doesn't end in your lead generation. And that's the customer journey. So personally, I had this great experience with um, uh, a mortgage company. Mm -hmm. And I was, you know, I was looking for a mortgage for my home. And I was you know, emailing people, asking for referrals, you know, and they would send me some people that I knew. They would send me like, Okay, just, you know, contact this guy or that guy. And then those mm -hmm. guys would tell me, yeah, just email me all your information. And I'll, you know, I do a pre-approval or whatever. And I am pretty conscious about data management and about, you know, processes, etc. And I would have to actually follow up on those guys asking, hey, what's going on with my pre-approval? Like, <laughs> yeah. Where are you? And um, one day I got tired of it and I actually Googled and these guys showed up. Um, it's called Rocket Mortgage now, I think. It was many years ago. And they have this platform. And on the platform, they pre-approved you. And then the platform was amazing. They had like every single step of the way. What was going to happen? They anticipated the moves. I was able to upload my documents. And they would approve or not approve and send you feedback. And in the, and the, word, the best part was that every step of the way, every time I uploaded a document, they would call me. Say, no, did you understand what you're doing? You needed help. Everything is okay. This is what's going to happen next. I was like, wow. Yeah. Those guys got, I lost count of how many recommendations from me awesome. for other clients, right? Yeah. Because of their great communication and their follow up and all the stuff that takes you down that journey, right? Exactly. And the integration mm -hmm. between the tools of technology and the human touch and the hand holding. They were able to establish a system that was scalable using technology, but using humans too. I like that. So that's the key, right? You have to be able to identify your process so that it's scalable, but it also has a human touch. Because really, like technology platforms go only, you know, this far. Yeah. And we know that there is, mm -hmm. you know, there is a need for human connection. We learned that through the pandemic too. You know, we sure. learned to use the platforms, but we still want to be able to ask people questions. That's the key to customer experience. That's the key to client 
um, client services, etc. So that made me think a lot. And I said, you know, it's not just about getting the leads. I actually had another client that we did, you know, an amazing Google AdWords campaign. They got, you know, they were um, an investment fund and they got mm -hmm. almost at least 600 leads, which wow. for them yeah. was more like more than they had ever had in the whole history of the fund. <laughs> they could not handle them. Yeah. So that's why my approach is, okay, yes, you need some leads to feed into the system, but there are a ton of leads that are throughout your journey that are actually cheaper for you. And that's why I always tell CEOs, these leads are cheaper. They like that. Yeah. You know, it's cheaper to get a lead that is farther down your customer journey and, you know, or getting a, a referral than getting a new lead. So you that's know, you... the money that you put into buying that many Google ads. See how much money you can put into improving the customer experience. Yeah, I love that. And in the way, the way you look at things is that there are different levers that uh, enable scalability and stuff like that. And I'm, I'm assuming that you know these automations and these integrations with the human connection and where you know what's triggering what. You know, when do we pull this lever and push that one in order to make those happen? Are you working through that with your clients? And what what are some of the other examples that you have that sort of uh, enable scalability on those frameworks? So we, we view scalability from a marketing communications and branding standpoint as having three levers. One is the business strategy. Mm -hmm. You have to have a very clear value proposition by which your whole team, that, that your whole team stands behind it. So the early days, Sapos. Sapos one of, was one of the first ones to really focus on that. And they grew because of that, right? Yeah. They were like, okay, this is our culture. This is what we believe in. And mm -hmm. what we believe in comes before our product. So we really focus on that business, you know, core and the business strategy and the go-to-market strategy and what space you can occupy in your market. And then, just then, we go into your marketing communications messaging. Is your brand communicating speaking and visually what you want to communicate. Yeah. So if, you know, you look like a kid and talk like a little old man, then it's not going to be consistent. It's going to distract <laughs> your consumer and it's not going to work. So make sure that what you do, what you say and how you look are the same. So important. I mean, I, I look at some and I've got my own framework around this sort of stuff, too. And we call it the promise, right? You know, you, you know, everybody calls it different things, but we call it the promise and having that promise in alignment and living and aligning everything to that promise, what you're promising your clients in order to deliver that, you know, the language, the communication, all of your frameworks, all of those experiences that you were just chatting about, you know, it's such an important piece of the puzzle. And how often do you find that there are misalignments when you're when you're starting to work with a client where you know that kind of stuff isn't quite aligned because i i find that a lot where oh. you know it's just it, there just seems to be thing and they're like oh we've always done it that way and it's like well you know, maybe we, maybe we need to change a few things just because you've always done it that way. Cause it's when you don't have that full alignment there, it just doesn't seem to happen. And they're, they're, they're sort of caught with the blinders on and feeling as though they should continue to do it the way they've done it. And, and how do you get people through that, uh, Alejandra? It's hard. I'm not going to lie. Um, I, I've known, a, I have a, you know, a friend that, well, professional, but, you know, we've worked together for many years in different capacities. And I was helping him with his organization and working with his uh, partner too the other day, you know, a couple of weeks ago. And I was asking him um, and his partner, why? Yeah. Right? So, yeah. and Sometimes, like his partner was like, come on, you want me to say I love nature and I want to make the world like he was like, yeah. we, we, ha we, we have that kind of relationship. And I'm like, 
well, but I need to get to why you started these. And what I do is I ask him, I ask them, what do you want to fix? What do you love? Or what really makes you angry? And the anger one really works. Because it's like, oh yeah, I hate it when they're charging those fees to that <laughs> the clients that don't deserve it. I'm like, there we go. That's the Find it that way. Yeah. And then the main challenge that I also encounter is you may have passion, you know, with the leader. The leader may be passionate and they are great at that, but they lack the communication. Yeah. Yeah. They how how to how to share the passion, right? Right. And they they forget to actually remind it to a team and work with them about it. Yeah. And once you light them up, it's gonna go that much faster for you yeah. too. But you, yeah. they have to share that passion with you and you have to show them why you chose it. I, I couldn't agree more. I, I mean, we certainly work with similar um, clients in that state. I mean, it's one of those things. It's communicating. I think like the biggest job of the leader today is really just to continuously communicate that promise, right? So that everybody around them knows their clients, their team, their wholesalers and suppliers, all the other people that are helping them deliver that. I mean, such a big piece because without that communication, nobody knows how to scale. Yeah, nobody exactly. knows what they're working towards, right? Yeah. And mm -hmm. I think that's the big thing is having this, having this thing so that everybody knows and it's so communicated that we can align all these scaling levers so that it's going to accomplish it. Do you, do you think in that term as well? Completely agree. And also accepting that you, you will not, you will have to accept that not everybody will buy that. Yeah. That they will not, you know, grab your vision and go with it because mm -hmm. they may not see it. Yeah. So there are like unicorn leaders that inspire everybody. Yeah. You know, 99.9% .9 of leaders are not that, you know, yeah, exactly. you will inspire some and some others are going to be, uh, yeah, that's fine. I just want to make my payroll, right? I just want the check at the end of the month. And then you, your work will be to try to differentiate those. And we, in, and Scalto, we always say is aces in their places. And yeah. for that, we actually use the, we, I think we spoke about this, the, EO, the EOS uh, philosophy, right? You want to make sure that they get the role they want it and they understand it, right? And that they understand the vision behind it. Um, so yes, it is about inspiring everybody, but I think it's also accepting that you're not everybody's cup of tea and you're never going to be. Yeah. Yeah. I like that too. You know, what, what are the, the main issues that you've encountered around scaling over the years when, when you're working with these people, like what one or two or three of the main things that you've encountered in almost every time it's like, mm, we just got to get through this. Yeah. So one of them is client experience, definitely how to yeah. handle leads yeah. and how to follow up with leads. Mm -hmm. A lot of my organizations lack a good, like, the patients, um, accepting that, for example, most of pro most products require many touch points before you convert. Yeah, so that's one thing that I I think they find it hard. Um, mostly, if you're a startup or if you're you know in mid growth, mm -hmm. um, seeing those numbers and accepting that some services have low, uh, longer uh, sales cycle and a lot of more touch points. That's one thing. And putting the processes and in people in place for that, that's one very important thing. And then the other one is um, not making a better, not doing a better job of getting more business from ex existing clients. Yeah. That's 90% yeah. of companies. Crazy, eh? Yes. We already have them, yet we're not giving them what they want from us. And that's part of what we were talking about before we hit the, yeah. board, the productization of services. Mm -hmm. When you approach your services with a clear structure that's internal and, 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 uh, and for clients, there is a path for growth for them that you can establish and show them. And that will make, make it easier to grow with them. Yeah. 
a lot of consultants just open the doors and say, I'll do whatever you need. And there is no like clear path and they let the client drive the direction of the consulting process. Yeah. And if you switch that around, both for services, I've been doing it for a cybersecurity company too. Yeah. Awesome. If you switch that around and tell them, hey, this is a process we follow, then you can grow the relationship with them, be driving that relationship. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Um, and that brings us sort of to the end of our conversation. Time goes quick here on the Simplifying mm -hmm. Entrepreneurship Podcast, and I appreciate the time you spent with us here today. I want to get everybody a chance to find out how to learn more about you. And, you know, I'll certainly put the uh, links for everything in, in our notes as well, too, as well as your podcast, thebizofwealth.com that we chatted about a little bit earlier. But if, if they want to learn more about your business and you, how do they get a hold of you, Alejandra? So our website is scalto.com, but uh, I'm the only Alejandra Salatapolsky in the world. So it's really <laughs> easy to just Google me and find me on LinkedIn, Twitter, et cetera. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for spending some time with me today. And I'm sure our listeners are going to love this one. Thank you, Peter. Bye for now.